This is the first time since 2014 they've lost three games on the bounce in all competitions. Do you think that that is an important stat, Emma? Well, I think it's important in terms of it affects the team's confidence that they're in a position where they're losing games successively, something they haven't done in a while, and particularly a group that's been lauded three weeks ago for being you know, Premier League contenders after beating Manchester United. So a difficult moment, I think, for Spurs and difficult for Pochettino because he has no new players in which to keep the environment fresh. He's got a group of players that you can clearly see some are jaded still from, I can't just say the World Cup, I'd, I'd like to say the last couple of years. Once again, the way of, of playing and pressing under Pochettino is very demanding. And I don't know the exact rotation of Tottenham's team, but I s suggest it would probably be less than that of others. So perhaps there's, you know, the fallout effect of that for, for, for Tottenham. Now, what's gone wrong, do you think? Again... It's very difficult to put a, a finger on it, but to go from beating Manchester United 3 0 at Old Trafford to then losing the next game to a very highly motivated and you know Watford team who got off to a great start. But if you are to be contenders, then really you have to try and get something from those games. And I think that's a question mark that's been pointed at Spurs over the last couple of years. All of a sudden, they seem to be going seamlessly, going well, and then out of the, out of anywhere or nowhere comes a result that sort of tips them off balance. I always think it's important to add players to your squad. I think that may come back to hurt Spurs over the course of the season. Um, tonight, you know, they've lost two goals late on, psychologically damaging, but to go and play as well as they did in the San Siro will give Pochettino a lot of encouragement. The game at the weekend, we know uh, no Deli Ali, no Hugo Lloris, they, they really suffered from that. And, and when you mentioned the, the transfer window, since the introduction of the summer transfer window in 2002, no other club has ever gone an entire window without any signings. Mm. We spoke about that a lot over the summer and, and we discussed it in great detail, but is it when you lose big key players like this, and also tonight no Alderweireld, no Trippier, yeah. that you start to notice that you, your, your depth is so weak? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that depth is weak. I, w I would agree with Emma's point about being jaded from the World Cup. They had a lot of players who went very, very deep into that tournament. And I actually defended Tottenham at the time for not signing players because they're in a really difficult situation. They're a club that are moving to a new stadium. They're a club that when you've got the likes of a Harry Kane, a Christian Eriksen, Deli Alli, how do you go and replace those players? with? It's very difficult to go and sign a striker and guarantee him 20, 30 games a season when Harry Kane's in, been in such good form for the past two or three years. Yeah. They're in a really difficult position in terms of their transfer and recruitment at the moment. But yeah, at the moment it is hurting them. And we were talking about Daniel Sturridge, how important squad players are. I don't see a Daniel Sturridge at the moment in top form in Tottenham squad that can come in and replace a Harry Kane who at the moment, by his own standards, is seeming tired and jaded, which is completely understandable given the last two years he's had. Talk about players that played in the World Cup. 12 players at the World Cup for, for Tottenham. Nine of those reached the semi-finals. That's more than any other club. Yeah. When you talk about Kane and, and, and him looking tired, you can compare him to Eden Hazard, was rested for the first couple of games, came off the bench. Mm. They had the squad, to, I suppose, to be able to do that. When you look at Harry Kane and, and his graphics, this is on from last season. All you can tell from that graphic, all you need to know is that those stats are down. So 17-18 onto 18-19, everything is down. So, it, so it's, um, is it no surprise? Are we, are we expecting a little bit too much from him? He's a human being. Mm. What do you do I, with him then? I, well, try and give him a break as the season progresses. Obviously, he's so important to Spurs, but I think there must be avenues throughout the season where they can give him, you know, maybe four or five days off or a week. That's, that's what I would look to do as a manager. I don't think he's uh, notoriously a great start of the seasons, although he yeah. scored in August this so year. So did they miss a trick then? Should they have rested him at the beginning of the season? I don't, I don't, I think, let's see where he ends up. I mean, he's a top player, mm. perhaps not putting the ball in the back of the net at this moment in time. But Spurs in general are struggling going forward. Mm. And, you know, you're only as good as the players around you. And if they're not creating the chances, you know, in, in Spurs have opened up quite poorly. They look lethargic. They look unsure of what they're doing. And that's very un -Pochettino like He's gone with a diamond, with Dyer and Dembele and Winks. Players look uncomfortable. And, and I think he's brought players back in from the cold. Players that were looking to be on their way out at the, at the end of last season. And I think as a result of that, he's trying to rotate and play 
played players in different games. Instead of last year, he stuck with a group, he stuck with a team, full-backs that, that he preferred. And I think at the moment, he's flipping between Davidson Sanchez, Alderweireld, and I don't, I'm not sure Pochettino knows his best side. And his best players, including the likes of Dembele, Kane, Eriksen, they're not producing their top performances yet. Christian Eriksen actually came out and said that the uncertainty of not knowing where they're playing, it could be a problem as well. Yeah. How destabilising can that be when it you don't know It is destabilising. You know, when you, you, when you want to be successful as a club, your home form is key. And, and part of the reason your home form is key, when you're a player and you're used to your surroundings, you're used to having that crowd, you're used to all of those pre-match routines that you have, that's why you are more likely to win at home. When you don't really have that and there is that uncertainty, it does definitely impact your squad in terms of your confidence of winning your home games, as we saw in their performance against Liverpool at the weekend. Mm. Um, I think also, a, a massive factor was Son being away yeah. because when, when Kane was out last year they replaced him with Son who would give them something and different Sean. but he's been away in, with the Asian games and sometimes we look at managers but timing is key and I think in this case for, for Mauricio at the moment he's in a really unfortunate position in the fact he can't really afford to rest Harry Kane like Chelsea can with Hazard because he doesn't have the son that who's just come back from that tournament who could actually give them something different moving forward. I think they need the season to settle down as well yeah. you know it Mentally and physically, if you looked at Harry Kane in the semi-final against Croatia, he was out on his feet. Mm. And emotionally, it takes a lot out of you as well. And the turnover from the World Cup has been so short. Yeah. So I can understand him being a little bit jaded and that. But I don't think it's a, a cause to panic for Spurs. I think yeah. once they find a rhythm... And they get into their fine. home. I mean, you think about it from the players' well, perspective. Point, yeah. They thought they were going to be starting in the new stadium. Then they're not. And then it took them a long sure time to get adjusted to Wembley for the home games as well. I, mean, did they I, I think the whole, the whole process... I, I think Tottenham need to be given some credit. They won more away games than any other team in the Premier League last year. They haven't had a single home game for quite some time. You know, but there was going to come a point, I think, the juggernaut, the Pochettino mm. juggernaut was going to have a temporary a slip. He's yeah. a top manager, they're top players, they're having a difficult moment. And I think, you know, you'll see the quality of Spurs come together, I think, in this difficult moment. And I think they will find their way no, out of it. He's vocal about it, Maurizio Pochettino. He says, if we play like this, we're not going to win in any competition. It's not like him, mm. you know, so there may be a little air of grumbling or frustration there. You know, normally he always is quite smooth and serene almost in front of the cameras. I'm a big fan, you know, the way he's, obviously the way he sets his team out, but the way he handles the media as well. So just a little bit of a crack there that I've not seen before. But you think about it, look, the majority of Tottenham squad haven't even had a pre-season. They've no. come, they've had a break, they've come in. It's a, it's a high-pressing game, it's a high-energy game. You can see just when you watch Tottenham play, they just aren't covering the ground in the way that they did with the, the same amount of freshness. And... I agree with Neil. I think it's about having to stage that over the course of the season so that when players can take the right recovery, they need a few days, go and get a bit of sun somewhere and, and get oh, off their legs. Yeah. 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 No, Honestly, it's, they didn't get long enough and then people are expecting them to go into high-pressure games and be the exact same as they were three, four months ago. It, it, you just can't, yeah, exactly, you just can't do it. So stadium and, and rest aside, mm. in the next transfer window, should Pochettino be afforded more backing to go out and, yeah, and buy some more you, players? You'd hope so. And, and I, I see. I thought Lucas Moore, that business last January, was fantastic. He's now yeah. he's taken his time to acclimatise to the league. And the thing that we talk about with transfer windows and signing players, we think signing players is always the answer. You sign a player and it just automatically makes your team better. That, that's just not the case. It takes, especially if you sign a player from abroad, it takes some time to acclimatise to a league mm -hmm. where the tempo in England is a completely different to on the continent. So, yeah, they may look in January to strengthen. What's more important now is the here and now, dealing with this, with this situation they're in now until January, making sure they get back on track, making sure they go back to play. When you change systems like they did, I was really surprised that he went away from his from his tried and tested system against Liverpool. I thought that was a key indicator before yeah. the game that he was worried about that game and felt he needed to do something that he hadn't done before in order to win the game. That's more of a worry for me at the moment. I think you'll find, and even in this game against Inter, they went back to their 4-2-3-1 with two wide players. I think mm. in time, when he gets the right amount of, of, of time to work on his system, they go back to their way of playing, they'll be absolutely mm. fine. And the January window is where Spurs do their business. Now, there are two windows. They don't tend to do it in August. They Moras, Deli Alleys, players come in January for Spurs because they like to get top-class players cheaper than everybody else.